Rule number seven, sales on autopilot. What I love about having, like, like the coolest thing, and I think every company has to have this, by the way, in every company forever, and what most people don't do, that's such low-hanging fruit that I'm obsessed with, that everything we ever roll out is gonna have this a part of it, is a sales team. It's a sales team. We hire salespeople, and the longest it ever takes for us to be profitable is four weeks. And then we're profitable on them every month forever. We do a monthly P&L on all of our salespeople on both teams every single month. If you don't do that, that's a problem. You should. Because it's easy for us to hire somebody and them to go a few months and we're like, well, I think they're doing good. They seem fine. They, they're calling. They're, you know, they're having fun. They're, before you know it, they're not profitable anymore. Our sales team, what did our, I mean, what did our sales team do in, in marketing this week while we've been doing whatever we've been doing? Yeah, I mean, you count like future revenue. They, they've, they've added $250,000 in, like, in, in committed future money, including immediate money, this week, just in security and marketing. That's sales on autopilot. And I didn't help any of them do any of it. That's freaking nice. You've got to get to where you're duplicating outside of yourself. Like if you're the best salesperson in the world, great. Show us you're really good by training other people to be great too. Because we're all in the room because we're great salespeople. It's okay to be a great salesperson. It's even better when you make other people better. So the way I think about it is I want to duplicate, my, I, I, I want to duplicate myself. Like I want to take me download my brain into Derek. Then I want him to go and replicate him with other people so that I'm not having to physically do it anymore. And that's how you can start to scale something. Every company on the planet should have an inside sales team. I told our local fitness tra trainer at Snap Fitness, I'm like, dude, you need people on the phones. You need a sales team. And I'm telling you, People have referrals. People will buy a whole year worth of training. They'll buy one-on-one -on -one training with you, personal training. You could have different levels. I'm like, dude, there's, I'm telling you, a whole nother, like the, 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 the restaurants that were more successful in 2020 with everything going on, were, they had all their client lists. They were texting them. They were calling them. They were delivering when they never delivered before. Like they were creative. And they were coming out with new ideas to get the job done instead of sitting around like everybody else in the city making freaking excuses that, that they had no control over. Sales on autopilot changes everything. Every company we have has an inside sales team. And every company we ever have in the future is gonna have an inside sales team. Because I can go to Jamaica for a week and we're still gonna make sales and make money and be profitable. One of the big mistakes that people make though when they're hiring salespeople is they pay them too much money out of the gate. I want people to earn it. I want people to earn it. That's a massive mistake that most call centers or industry make right away. I'll give everybody, you know, flipping three, three or four grand a month and, and commissions and everything else. Like you, you gotta get to where, because a business only is successful when we make money and it's profitable. Only 4% of companies in the US earn seven figures a year, by the way. Every company in here should earn seven figures because only 4% of companies in the US earn seven figures, but there's more millionaires in the insurance industry than any other industry on planet Earth. So if there's more millionaires and seven figure earners in this industry, then guess what? We're in the right vehicle, we're in the right place and everyone should eventually get to that point. Because I'm telling you, life gets really good when you start to get to that point. And if the company's not profitable, the company's not gonna be around to employ people anyway. <laughs> that's, a, that's a problem, a mistake I made years ago with everything else we were doing. I'm like, well, we're doing, you know, 
400 grand a month in leads, but I'm not making as much money as I thought I'd be making. What's the problem? I didn't know what I was doing. I was a horrible business owner, an even worse CEO. Having an amazing sales team that's on autopilot changes the game. You want to write 100 policies this month, even in your local market with local LOAs, local people, whatever, and you don't have to write any of them. Now, do you eventually, you know, do, you, do some of you love personal production and you want to keep selling? Phenomenal. But I'm telling you, everything will change and the whole thing will freaking explode when you start doing that with other people. When you start doing that with other people. Because one of the things that we've learned is not only do you have to look out for the company first, but you have to make the team better every single day. So when you have a sales team, here's some of the things you can do to make them better. We train twice a day in our office, 8.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Twice a day, every day. And here's some of the things that we do. We watch sales training videos. They're watching our CA sales system right now. Twice a day, we're watching a video. We're having a discussion about what we learned from that video. Why? Because everybody picks something different. Like after this, some of you are gonna have different nuggets that come from this specific talk right now. So with a video, the same thing. Third, we're role playing immediately. I don't care if it's cheesy. I don't care if they enjoy doing it. I don't care if it's awkward. I don't believe in practicing on the first phone call of the day. I don't. And I know for you to get better, for the team to get better, we have to role play every single day. We role play twice a day. But most people, when they role play, they sit down, they slouch. They're like, okay, all right, hello, ring, ring. Betty, are you there? Like, and there's, they're, they're not getting any better. They're actually getting worse because it's, it's, it's horrible efficiency. So what we do, number one, we stand up. Nobody sits down when we're role playing because you're going to sit down and call, make calls all day anyway. Number two, we role play something specific. We don't just role play for the sake of role playing. Like we role play something specific that we know they can get better at. They'll present me, uh, they'll, they'll present, present me with a problem. I'll give them a solution and then we'll role play that. Also, what a lot of sales teams make the mistake of is they change up what they do role play wise every single day. Every single session, we used to do it too. Now, we take one idea and we role play it the whole week. And we're role playing that all week. Why? Because we want to get really good at that before we move on to something else. Like, I, I don't want that problem to come up as much again. So a lot of times it's closing, it's, it's, it's an objection, right? It's asking for a referral. It's building the value in, a, in, in something before we offer it. Like we train on something specific role play wise for the entire week, every single week, one thing. That's how you make them better. Yes, you want sales on autopilot. Yes, you want a team. Yes, yes, yes. However, you want a team that gets better over time and the revenue grows and they make more money and everybody's happier because they are improving along the way. One of my gifts is taking what I know about sales, making it extremely freaking simple and making someone else an expert at it in a very short amount of time. Most people can't do that. I can't. Rule number seven, sales on autopilot. Rule number eight, I called it limiting beliefs on the training tour. Eliminate mental barriers. Here's what I mean. I've learned about myself that there are specific things that are holding me back from being more successful. And it's all up here, right? Worry about what everybody else thinks, family, friends. Well, what are they going to think? Or well, if I do this video on, on Facebook, what's everybody going to think? Who cares? Some of us have a mental barrier of, of, of money, a fear of spending it that you're not going to get it back. I know that when I invest money, I'm committed to taking a nugget away 
that I can improve and get an ROI on. I have no mental barrier with investing in myself. That was a mental barrier for me massively three years ago, this month, three years ago. Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay? There's, I mean, there's other mental barriers, right? You care about what everybody else thinks, fear, money, right? You don't know that you can replace the money, so you're afraid of spending it. Um, you, you don't want to hire people because you're like, well, they're not going to be as good as me. Like, there, there's all these things that are up here that are called limiting beliefs that are holding us back from taking that next step in our life, from taking that next level in our life. There are specific things holding us back. And the sooner you identify them and the sooner you try to eliminate them, you're like, well, how do I eliminate it? If I've got a fear of spending money, spend money. If I've got a fear of investing in myself, do it. If I've got a fear of worried about what everybody else thinks, then do something that's out of your comfort zone and force yourself not to care. Everyone's got an opinion. We'll get flipping 50 negative comments on YouTube every day. Phenomenal. It's a lot more than we used to get. And I could care less what anybody of the, uh, what, what any of them think. Like some of you are like, well, I, I'm afraid of what people are going to think of me specifically, right? We get, a com- we, we, get, we get comments all the time. I used to do this a lot. I still do it. But when I was shooting er- early videos, I would like touch my belt like every freaking three seconds. And I have no clue why. So we still get comments from videos of like three years ago. We're like, dude, why does he keep touching his belt? And I'm like, I don't know either, but I did. So get over it. It can paralyze us from doing the things that we know we need to do. We all have fears. We all know we need to get out of our comfort zone. We all know there are specific things holding us back from taking that next level. The key is to identify them and try to eliminate them. I'm telling you, if you're not taking the next level and leveling up every single year and everything's not getting better, something is holding you back. Something is a problem. Something is getting in the way. Here's my challenge to you. My challenge to you is, out of these eight rules, who's already got one where you're like, dude, I can get better in that area. There's no question about it. Like, I know it. I see it. Okay, good. What you need to do is choose three out of the eight that you need to improve at in 2021. And then prioritize those from one to three because you can't do them all at once. Like normally I'm in an event, a conference, I'll take like 28 pages of notes and I'll, I remember, you know, first 10X watching Coach Burt speak, I got like 48 pages of notes I go back to the office and I'm like, holy crap, where should I start? You start one step at a time. One step at a time. Who's ready to apply these eight rules to eight figures in 2021? Okay. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. Thank you so much. I wanna thank Cody and Lauren for putting this on. Give those guys a big hand for doing this. Amazing, amazing event, okay? Amazing, really, you guys are awesome. Like, when he called and said, hey, would you do this deal? The fact that they're willing to...